Mr. President, Madam High Commissioner, Excellencies, Distinguished Delegates, I feel honored to address the 49th session of the Council. Let me begin by congratulating you, Mr. President, and members of the Bureau for your election to lead the Council this year. I assure you of my delegation's full support in discharging your respective responsibilities. Mr. President, we are gathered here amidst the pandemic crisis. The crisis has affected all nations, economies, and societies worldwide. It has not limited the enjoyment of human rights, but also called for a binding mechanism for, to address future pandemics. Nepal has been able to vaccinate over 70% of our targeted population, thanks to the generous support from our neighbors, development partners, friendly countries, and COVAX facility. Despite the pandemic challenges, Nepal's commitment to the promotion and protection of human rights and full faith in democracy has not diminished. The Constitution of Nepal guarantees fundamental human rights and independent judiciary, rule of law, good governance. Nepal continues to engage with human rights bodies and mechanisms. Last year, the Council considered Nepal's third national report on UPR. We are now preparing a comprehensive plan of actions for the implementation of the UPR recommendations over the next four years. We have recently submitted the periodic report on CRC and remain committed to submitting other periodic reports on the treaty, to the treaty bodies. The Special Rapporteur on Extreme Poverty and Human Rights successfully concluded his visit to Nepal last year. We will continue to welcome other Special Rapporteurs at a mutually convenient time. Nepal underlines the importance of promoting cooperation and dialogue for the promotion and protection of human rights with an objective, non-selective, non-political and impartial approach. Mr. President, Nepal is committed to inclusive principles to augment the participation of underrepresented sections of society in state mechanisms. The Constitution of Nepal has guaranteed at least 33% women's representation in federal and provincial par parliaments and accumulated 40% at local levels. Sexual and reproductive health of women and girls are protected under the law. Caste-based discrimination are strictly prohibited and harmful traditional practices against women and girls are outlawed. We've also endured the protection of, ensured the protection of rights and identity of sexual minorities. Similarly, social security measures have been implemented to strengthen the well-being of the elderly, indigenous people, persons with disabilities and backward sections of society. Nepal, as a pathfinder country of global partnership, Alliance 8.7, is committed to ending child labor by 2025, as well as child marriage and trafficking in persons. The Constitution of Nepal guarantees freedom, freedom of religion as a fundamental right. We believe that freedom of religion cannot be impaired by coercion or monetary inducement for conversion. Nepal has a vibrant civil society. We consider civil society, community-based organizations, and the media as partners in the promotion and protection of human rights. Being a major country of migrant workers, Nepal places high importance on the safety, security, and well-being. We have been constructively engaged with countries of destination. The National Human Rights Commission of Nepal, an A-category accredited institution, is independent to carry out its constitutional mandate. Nepal is committed to ensuring the independence of all the constitutional commissions and has been providing adequate resources to them. Nepal is committed to concluding the transitional justice process in accordance with the Comprehensive Peace Accord, the directives of the Supreme Court, relevant international commitments, concerns of the victims, and the ground realities. Two commissions, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the Commission for Investigation on Enforced Disappeared Persons, are dedicated to completing their mandates. There will be no blanket amnesty in cases of serious violation of human rights. To conclude, Mr. President, I wish to reiterate our strong faith in the values of multilateralism to strengthen and sustain our common aspiration of a peaceful, prosperous, and just world for the universal protection, promotion of human rights. I wish this session a successful conclusion. I thank you.